first off, congratulations on Moana. It's coming out this next week. I know you're very excited. Uh, yes. How, how was the uh, process of um, researching for this film? I'm, I'm sure you probably went to very many places in the South Seas, correct? Well, um, yeah, it's, on all of our movies, research is the one of the biggest, most important components. Um, so actually, I didn't uh, join Moana until a little bit later. I came out about a year and a half ago. Okay. I was Before that, I was on Zootopia. Um, and I think right around the time where, when uh, John Musker and Ryan Clements went to the Pacific Islands, I was actually on a safari in Kenya for Zootopia. Um, so when they got back, I got to see these amazing, uh, these amazing documentaries about their, their trips. And uh, they went to a lot of different islands. They talked to elders there and fishermen and tattoo artists and dancers. Um, and really got to know, um, really got to know the people very well. And those people became our Oceanic Story Trust which is basically uh, a group of people that really kept us um, uh, in line in terms of telling the right type of story, inspired us to, to find new angles on that culture um, and to make sure that, that, that we were honoring that culture in the right way. Um, seeing to me that there was, there was one moment where I didn't just get to see those things in a documentary, I actually got to go to Hawaii and uh, meet the Pacific Voyaging Society and they actually took me out on one of their ocean, traditional ocean voyaging canoes, these huge double-hulled canoes, and um, to learn the art of wayfinding. I only had one day of that. They're literally like, it takes a lifetime, but we're going to give you the one-day version of it. Um, that was amazing uh, because actually one of the things they say is like a, a real wayfinder can, can be sleeping in the hull of a boat and know if they've gone off course in the middle of the night. And I said, that sounds like a nice story, but that can't be true. And when I was on the boat, they showed me how that would be possible, and it's ingenious and, and amazing. And um, so I think for uh, I think for all of us, we were uh, really, really impacted by that and honored that they would take us out there at all. Um, but more importantly, I think it really allowed the movie to have this this authenticity that you can't get if you don't actually get out there and do the research on your own. Is there a particular legend or story um, that inspires this movie, or is it an amalgamation of many? It's a, it's a well. There's there's sort of two two major buckets for that. One is um, uh, three thousand years ago, the people of the Pacific Islands uh, voyaged all throughout the Pacific, uh, and then for some reason, three thousand years ago they stopped, and they stopped for a thousand years, and nobody knows why. That's the true history. And then but then after a thousand years, they began to voyage again across the Pacific, and that's when they found Hawaii, and then actually circled all the way back and. and discovered New Zealand. And so that was the jumping off point that Ron and John came up with to say, okay, why did it stop? And then who is the one that started again? And so the idea that maybe our hero Moana is the one who started again was the jumping off point for her story. For the Maui character, there are um, stories of Maui throughout the islands. And actually every island, they have a slightly different version of who he is, um, his, his backstory, the type of um, personality that he has. Um, and so uh, we did a lot of research into, okay, well, there's so many different versions of who Maui could be. Um, which ones do we think will resonate the most and be true to the time period? So, for instance, Samoa has a different version of Maui than Hawaii did. But in our movie, Hawaii hasn't actually been found by the Pacific Islanders yet. And so we wanted to, to kind of focus on more Samoan versions of who, that, uh, who Maui could be. But by the end of the movie, have Maui be the type of character where, by the time they discover Hawaii, he's more of that, uh, that version of who Maui is. So he actually, over the course of the movie, he does, he does change a little bit. His personality changes and he evolves. So we wanted to try to incorporate a lot of those different stories. What is, what is the time period that the movie takes place in? There's two. So the movie starts 3,000 years ago uh, for Maui's uh, sort of the prologue. Uh, of Maui, but then the, the body of the movie takes place about 2,000 years ago, um, and the, the, the very tail end of that, Moana begins the voyages again, which is historically accurate in terms of when when voyaging began. Yeah. Talk a little bit about. Oh. Every, um, it seems like in all these movies, there's a, an animal sidekick. Yeah. In this particular one, we have Pua, I think, right? Pua, yes. Why a pig? Why a pig? Okay. So, um, when Ron and John went to the Pacific Islands, they saw uh, pigs and chickens everywhere, and they loved them, and they felt like, okay, well, there has to be a chicken and a pig in this movie. And Ron and John also uh, find ways to put their own personality into the movies, and so early on, um, and Ron and John will tell you this, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking out of turn. Um, uh, Pua was this, this, this doughy, sweet, wide-eyed, sincere animal, which is very much Ron. And then the Hey Hey character originally was this kind of scrawny, 
bird-faced jerk, and John Musk will say that was kind of based on him. Um, and so that was, uh, <laughs> uh, the story's better from them because it doesn't sound like I'm making fun of them, but it's really, early versions, you could really feel that, and even the character designs actually lent themselves to that. Um, but in the movie itself, um, actually there was, a, there was a lot of debate over which, it's kind of a spoiler, but which animal would go on the voyage with Moana? And early on, actually, both Pua and Hehe were on the boat with her on her journey. Um, but we found out um, through the process of rewriting that um, and, and rescreening the movie that that we wanted Moana to really be challenged out in the ocean. And if she had Pua, who's this really sweet, comforting friend of hers along for the journey, it wasn't as hard for her. Because anytime things got difficult, she could always get a hug from her little pig. So instead of setting sail with the pig, we stuck her with the rooster, who originally was kind of a jerk, and we actually changed his character as well, so he's really just a, uh, a moron. Um, and he became this amazing obstacle for her because he should not be on that boat. He's a, a terrible uh, boat mate. Uh, and any, any person would probably just cook that chicken and eat him and be done with it. But Moana's this amazing, compassionate character. So even though he keeps throwing these obstacles up in her, in her way, she defends him, she cares about him, um, and we felt like it really helped her character and tell her character story. Talk about the the, the, the voice cast for this movie. You've yep. got some great actors and actresses, yep. and, and the majority of the cast come from that heritage that you're you're, you're telling in the yep. movie. Yeah. So so uh, I know for Ron and John, it's really important to to cast uh, the movie with people of Pacific Islander descent. That was one of our, our mandates that they really felt strongly about. Um, and also just brings a, a different uh, tone and point uh, point of view and personality. Um, so um, uh, Ali'i, um, you guys have probably heard the story, she, she didn't actually even try out for this part. At the time she was 14 years old and there was a casting call to, throughout the Pacific Islands. Um, and she felt like, uh, I'm not going to try because I don't think I could actually ever be it. Um, but they couldn't find the right person for that part that felt like uh, that had the personality, that had to give, both act really well and sing beautifully. Um, and on the very last day of casting, the casting agent saw a video of Ali'i at a, uh, a chair, I think it was a charity event, and she was in a glee club, and saw Ali and was like, I think there's something special about her, and found a way to contact her and said, would you come in and read for this part? And uh, Ali came in, and she turned out to be the very last person on the very last day of casting that they saw, and nailed it, because she is so that, that character, that's who she is, um, and that's how she got that role. Which is amazing. At 14, crazy. Um, I was flipping pizzas when I was 14, and she is the, the voice of a Disney hero. Um, and then, of course, Dwayne Johnson was next, and um, with his Samoan roots, that was really important to him. And when he came in, it was about the same time that I was brought into the project. Um, so to have a, a character like Dwayne, who he himself is larger than life and he's super charismatic. Um, he could easily overwhelm the movie in terms of becoming the hero of that movie. It'd be so easy for that to happen. So a lot of what we try to do is say, okay, we know that he's the, the most charismatic human being on the planet, but, but Moana's the hero of the movie, so she has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy and eclipse him. She has to be the hero of the movie. So it became this great challenge for us to make sure that she remained the star um, and could believably defeat Maui from time to time and, and, and spar with him in a way that felt real for a 16 year old. And do the, um, do the traits and like, personalities of the actors influence the what will become the traits and personalities of their characters? Oh, 100%. I, I always find that, um, certainly for the main character parts, that, that you try to fuse the actual character personality with the, the character in the movie. Uh, because then people are, are in their they're in their wheelhouse, you know. Uh, they don't have to pretend to be something else. They can be who they are. And so typically we'll cast knowing that. So like Zootopia, Jennifer Goodwin is very much the personality of Judy Hopps, and Jason Bateman is very much the personality of Nick Wilde. We do that because we want to cast people that are, that are close to their characters so that they know them inside and out, and their performances are more sincere and believable because they're basically being themselves. You talked about your time on Zootopia yep. before this. Um, you talked about flipping pizzas when you were 14. That's right. Pizza movers. What is your uh, Disney experience in between? Um, it was just basically just that I was flipping pizzas for Disney for decades. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I, I joined Disney about five years ago. Um, before that, I was in live action, main, mainly in uh, features, but also uh, on sitcoms. Um, but I always loved the storytelling of Disney. 
Growing up, um, Jungle Book is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, that really influenced why I wanted to become a storyteller and the music within that uh, as well. So I was a, both a, a musician and, um, and a writer. And in college, I kind of had to decide which, which way am I going to go. And I ultimately chose writing. But now to work on a movie that's also musical. But like, my world's collided. Um, but I joined Disney about five years ago because I, I loved the, the, the scope of the movies. But I also loved the, the, the reach in terms of being able to talk to people all around the world and hopefully to say something important. And so I, uh, I harassed Disney for a very long time until I finally met with Byron Howard, uh, who was reconceiving Zootopia. He had, okay, there's a predator animal and a prey animal. We knew that these were going to be two groups that don't get along. And I was fascinated uh, by being able to, to say something to that in a world that so desperately needs it. Um, so I joined Disney then, and um, I uh, locked myself in a room and said, I will never leave this place, and you can't make me. And that's my, my journey. You talked about wanting to reach people with a message. What yeah. would be the message that you're hoping to reach people with from Moana? It's interesting. There, well, there's sort of two. Um, typically, we, we like people to leave the theater uh, not with an answer, but thinking about something. And Moana is definitely a character who is very empowered, but her story and her journey is really one of being torn between uh, what her world around her and her family is telling her she should be, and then what she believes, who she believes she is in her heart, and trying to find a way to reconcile those things. So I would hope that people leaving it would feel like if there's something deep within you that's telling you this is who you are, that you will listen to it, even when things are difficult, even when things are hard, even when you have these amazing failures, um, that, that there's something within you that, if you listen to it, can pick you up and help you move forward. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, but then also on top of that, um, we fell in love uh, with uh, the people of the Pacific Islands. They, they welcomed us, uh, they helped us throughout this journey, so I also hope that people would leave the movie feeling, feeling connected to them uh, in a way that, um, that they haven't yet. To me, I certainly do. Uh, when I was working on the movie, when I'd hit, um, when I'd hit difficult parts of, of the story trying to figure things out, I'd actually go down, this is in Los Angeles, I'd go down to the ocean, I'd stand in the Pacific Ocean to feel connected. Uh, and, it, and it really worked. I, I got through a lot of uh, difficult story moments just by, by thinking about that and by feeling that connection. And, and I think that I'm hoping that people will leave feeling connected as well. The the music I've already downloaded the soundtrack and I'm in love with the music. Mm -hmm. um, if and I'm saying, is this Lin Manuel Miranda's first big project outside of Hamilton? Yep. Um, how, how was it working with him? Uh, amazing. I mean, uh, it's funny. Um, Ron and John actually met with him before Hamilton ever hit the stage, um, and uh, so when when they were meeting with him, they said, "What what are you working on?" He goes, "Oh, because they they loved in the Heights." They said, what are you working on? He's like, I'm working on this, um, it's kind of like a, a, a hip hop reimagining of the Founding Fathers, and Ron and John are like, cool, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> and uh, guess what? It's the biggest hit in the world, um, and we're so lucky to have him. For me, working with him was a dream come true. I mean, he's incredibly smart, but incredibly thoughtful, and he was really, I think, connected to telling this story. Uh, he went on all those research trips as well, so really uh, made a lot of close connections uh, with the people he met there. Um, but this, in terms of his ability to to entertain within music but also say something important in a really smart way to me it was something that I really tried to learn from and uh, in all these movies we use music to, to push story and push character forward and he has this incredible knack I mean he's summed up I think the first 15 years of Alexander Hamilton's life in a, a minute and a half of music so uh, for this movie, when we had, there was a lot of ground to cover sometimes, we knew, okay, this is going to be in very good hands. He's going to be able to get this information across in a way that's super entertaining, but also interesting and challenging, but also um, to have it sound very much of the, of the world and the culture and the music that they'd been so influenced by.